Welcome to an amazing video on finding the rate of change at a point. This is a high level calculus type of question, but we're going to dive into not some trick or fancy way of doing it. We're going to dive into the theory behind how to actually do this. All right, so how to find the rate of change at a point. Hopefully the concept to finding the rate of change at a single point is actually rather simple. So here's the idea. So let's just say that I said, all right, let's find the rate of change at this point right here. Okay, so that means I'm trying to find the slope of the tangent line at that point. So if I were to draw a tangent line at that point, I want to find the slope of that line because the slope of that line is my rate of change. Rate of change and slope are the same thing. All right, so how do I find it? Because I'm pretty sure to find the slope of a line, you need two points. I don't have two points. Okay, so here's the idea. If I'm trying to find the rate of change at this point, what we do is we find a second point really, 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 really close to it, like right there. And then we find the line that connects those two points. Now, that's not the tangent line that I'm looking for. That would actually be a secant line. But the idea here, the theory is, is that since that second point is really, really, really close to the first point, the average rate of change between these two points should be really, really, really close to the average rate of change at the specific point I'm trying to find. And in fact, if I pick a point closer and closer and closer to my original point, then the average rate of change between the two points will be closer and closer and closer to the exact rate of change at the point. So if I pick a point that is, again, like might as well be, I mean, just a hair, a smidgen pass, it almost looks like they're the same point, but they're not. They're two different points. They're just really close together. If I find the average rate of change between those two points, because they're so close together, my answer to that average rate of change will be really, really, really close to the exact rate of change at that point. Let's actually put this theory into test to kind of test it out and see how it works. So let's find the average, or not average, excuse me, let's find the rate of change at x equals 3 for this function. All right, so we have a function, 2x squared minus 7x plus 15, and we want to find the rate of change at 3. So let's start off with the point that's at 3. So that is an, obviously an x value of 3. Now how do I find the corresponding y value? Well, I just plug it into the function, correct? And that's really easy to do. All I'm going to do is grab my calculator and literally going to plug 3 into the function. 2 times 3 squared minus 7 times 3 plus 15, and I get 12. Okay, so the point I'm trying to find the rate of change at is 3 comma 12. So what we need to do is pick a second point super, super close to 3, like literally just a smidgen pass. So how about 3.001? Again, literally a smidgen pass. So now I just have to find the output or the y coordinate for that point. So I'm going to go back to my calculator here. 2 times 3.001 squared minus 7 times 3.001 plus 15. And I get a number super duper close, 12.005002. Okay, this is all making sense because, again, you can't find a average rate of change unless you got two points. All right, so now the theory, again, I want to keep explaining that this is theory, is that if I find the average rate of change between these two points, I will be really, 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 really close to the rate of change at three. Why? Because the second point is really, really, really close to the first point. All right, so how do I find the rate of change? Well, I'll just subtract your y's, 12.005002 minus 12. Subtract your x's on the bottom, 3.001 minus 3. And on top, I get 0.005002. Don't even need a calculator to do that. Divided by 0.001. And when you divide that out, you get 5.002. So what I know is that the rate of change, the average rate of change between these two points is 5.002. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the rate of change at x equals 3. So, you know, the, the theory is the closer, if you pick a point really, really close to the point you're interested in, the average rate of change between those two points will be really, really, really close to the average, to the rate of change that you're looking for. So if I had a guess as to what the the rate of change at equals three is it, it's first and foremost, it's not 5.002, but what I'm telling you is that it's really, really, really close to 5.002. So take a wild guess five, the rate of change at X equals three is 
five. Okay, so hopefully that theory makes sense, right? But the problem is like, you know, it's it makes sense, but I got all these decimals I'm playing with. But again, the answer I got is actually not the answer. I had to use some common sense and this idea of what the theory tells me to understand why the rate of change at three is five. So how can I get five more actual? Like instead of saying, well, I, I think it's five. I, I mean, I would guess it's five, but I, I would have been able to know that I get five. So to do that, to really nail it down exactly, we do have to think a little bit more algebraically here. So here's how I'm going to do this. Once again, if I'm trying to find the average rate of change at 3, I'm going to start off with the point 3, 12. But instead of picking some random point that it's super duper close to 3, I'm going to think about it this way. I'm going to pick 3 plus h. So again, h is, uh, you know, uh, uh, in my previous problem, the previous example, I used 0 0.001. I took 3, I moved over ever so slightly 0 0.001, and I had 3.001. But again, that was arbitrary. I just kind of picked that number. So to do this more algebraically, we have to consider how much I'm sliding over as, as an unknown, right, as this h value. And I want to slide over just a smidgen, but, you know, just what's a smidgen, right? You know, like... 0 0.001, what about 0 0.0000001? So that's why I'm calling it H. It's, it's how much I'm sliding over. Okay, so what's the output if I plug in 3 plus H? Well, because H is a variable, it's not going to be a solid number here. It's literally going to be 2 times 3 plus H squared minus 7 times 3 plus H plus 15. So again, if I plug 3 plus h into this function, I, I unfortunately, I don't get a number. I get an algebraic expression because I'm literally plugging 3 plus h in. Okay, so again, I, I'm not being specific now, right? What I'm doing is being generic, and that's being algebraic. All right, so now i got to find the average rate of change between these two points. How do I find the average rate of change, ROC, rate of change? Uh, well, take the y's and subtract them. So that's 2 times 3 plus h squared minus 7 times 3 plus h plus 15. That's the first y minus the 12 that was the original y. So again, y minus y. And then I'm going to divide all of that by my x-coordinate of 3 plus h minus my x-coordinate of 3. Now, here's where a lot of really fun algebra is going to take place. So hopefully you're going to take your time here just like I am. Do not rush this or you will make mistakes. Order of operations, I'm going to square out the 3 plus h first. So that is 3 squared 9. A 3h and a 3x makes a 6h in the middle plus h squared. And if you're like, where'd you get that from? I highly recommend you going to the side and doing 3 plus h times 3 plus h. Uh, minus 21, that's the 7 times 3, minus 7h. And then I could actually do 15 minus 12, 15 minus 12 is 3. Again, I'm just following the rules of algebra. I'm allowed to distribute the negative 7 and so forth, all this fun stuff. Now check out my denominator. What's going to happen down here when I combine like terms? I just get h. The 3 and the negative 3 cancel out. All right, I got a little bit more to do here. I got to distribute that 2, so I get 18 plus 12h plus 2h squared minus 21 minus 7h plus 3 oh, divided by h. And now i got to combine my like terms here, and then I'm going to put them in order. I'm going to put the 2h squared first. I got a 12h and a negative 7h. That makes a 5h. And I got an 18 minus 21 plus 3. Grab a calculator if you need to. That's 0. It's gone. It's not even have to do anything there all divided by h. Now I'm going to continue my algebra work here because I noticed in the numerator, I have two terms that both share an h, so I can actually factor out an h from that numerator. And I get h times 2h plus 5, all divided by h. And then I notice something else amazing. These h's are going to reduce to a 1. And at the end of the day, I get 2h plus 5. Now, now let's make sure we understand this. What I just did was I thought generically, here's the point I'm trying to find the rate of change of. Here's another point, super duper close. How close? Well, H close. And I found the rate of change between these two points after a whole bunch of fun algebra work to be 2H plus 5. And again, what is H? It's how, it's the difference. It's how close my two points are. 
So if we actually go back to that previous problem, my two points were 0.001 away. Like I chose 3 and 3.001. So in this particular problem here, my H was 0.001. So if I plug in 0.001 for H, I get 2 times 0.001, which is 0.002 plus 5. I get 5.002, which is, is look, that's, that's what I got right here, 5.002. So that makes a whole lot of sense. But again, now I'm being super generic. I'm just saying, listen, I don't know what's close, right? 0.001, but I can even get closer. So now for me to understand the rate of change at this point, 3 comma 12, here's all I got to do. I just got to think to myself, all right, listen, if I choose a point, because here's the theory, right? I had my original point, the point I'm trying to find the rate of change at 3 comma 12. If I pick another point super close, then I'm going to get a average rate of change that's super close to the rate of change I'm looking for. But if I pick a point even closer, I'm going to get a average rate of change that's even closer to the point that I'm looking for. So the idea here is if I allow this H to essentially become a zero, because if I think about the distance between the two points becoming zero, that means the two points actually morph into one point, and I'm trying to find the rate of change at that one point. So if I allow that H to turn to a zero, I'm going to find the rate of change at the point I'm looking for. So what's two times zero plus five? Well, you guessed it, five. So that means the rate of change at this point, three comma 12, is five. Now listen, we concluded that here as well, did we not? We said, all right, the rate of change between these two points are super close, it's 5.002. Okay, that's not the answer because I just chose like a random point that's pretty close. But if I use my common sense, five is going to be the rate of change at the point. But again, this is the algebraic way of understanding that it's exactly five. I'm not like ho-humming like, well, I think it's five. No, I know it's five because I found the rate of change between the point I'm looking for and an arbitrary point really, really close. How close? Close by H. And then after all that fun algebra work, working with the rate of change, I got down to this point where I got 2h plus 5. And I understand that that h represents the difference between these two points. And if I allow that difference to just turn into nothing, 0, then I get 5. And that means these two points morph into one point. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do in this video is find the rate of change at that one point. So that's the rate of change at this 1.5. So just to extremely generically explain this, if you are trying to... Um, find the rate of change between two points. What you need to do is just think about x and its counterpart f of x. And then think of another point that's really, really close. How close? Well, h close, just a little bit over, and that's going to be comma f of x plus h. Then you have to find the rate of change between them by taking your x, f of x plus h, oh, excuse me, your y coordinate, y coordinate, minus the other y coordinate, f of x, right there, all divided by the x-coordinate of x plus h minus the x-coordinate of just x. Again, this is very generic. And again, if you find the rate of change here, that's going to be your, your answer. And then again, when you're all done with this, think about the, any h that's left over. Think about that remaining h diminishing down to a point that is zero. And if h is getting closer to zero, these two points are actually getting closer to themselves. And that's where we find the rate of change at a single point. Huh. Stay tuned for some more example videos if you're looking for me to do some more different types of functions with this theory. But that's the theory right there, and I hope it makes a lot of sense. All right, good luck.